Welcome everyone to the First Class Hockey Podcast. Today I've got a special guest, someone I've known probably for the last almost four years. I was introduced to him and he really, really helped me accelerate my career. And I owe uh, a lot to him and I'm thankful for him to come on. Um, he is, he owns a big brokerage, one of the biggest brokerages in Michigan. He's an author. He's a real estate coach. Um, he sold hundreds of homes a year by himself. Um, he's a wealth of knowledge. Uh, Brandon, uh, I am so honored to have you on, and uh, and I know a lot of people are getting a lot of value out of this. Uh, tell us, tell us something, kind of just a little bit about you. Yeah, appreciate you having me on the show, and um, yeah, love working with you over the over the past couple of years. Excited to see your company now grow. I think you got a lot of value to give to your agents, which is really exciting. So, been in the industry for about seventeen years, and really built my business with really two things in mind. One is servant leadership. So the people I get in business with, um, my my mindset from a leadership perspective, Matt, is to serve those people that I work with so that they can elevate their career to the highest level. That's number one. And then number two is this concept that I've been teaching now for quite some time, which is called reverse selling. And really, it's the same approach I take in leadership from a sales perspective to um, really look out for the prospect's best interest first to go out there to serve the consumer so that those consumers know that I have their best interest in mind, becoming more attractive to, to for people to want to work with them. So those two things have really helped to elevate my career over the past 17 years and uh, just having a lot of fun along the way. That's right. Serve along the way. Um, that, is, that is the, you know, servant leadership is a principle that that I first heard when I went through business school, but I really, really, and in, in my first, um, one of the first jobs I, I ever had, they talked about it. And at that time, I was probably too young and immature um, to really understand it. I thought it was a lot of uh, fluff, um, just a lot of theory. And oh, in, the perf in the perfect scenario, this is great. You know, it sounds great, yep. you know, um, but, but people are people and humans are humans and we've all got egos and agendas, but, the more I've got into the leadership role, I've came to learn that that is your role as a leader to serve other people. Um, you know, one of my core beliefs in our brokerage is you know, the, the role of the brokerage is to give the agents the proper support, training, structure, so they can grow their business as large as they want to uh, with the help of the brokerage and that the agent is the brand, not the brokerage. 100%. You know, that's, that's one of my core beliefs. Yeah, we share in that 100%. Yeah, so tell us, you know, um, mindset, uh, the more, like when I first got into, you know, like when I was introduced in real estate coaching, you know, the first thing they always talk about is mindset. And I was like, this is kind of like I, my opinion in the beginning was like, this is, this is just kind of a lot of fluff in the beginning. But the more my journey has went on, the more I've learned, and it's opened my eyes that mindset is 90% of the battle. Um, and it, it really is your mind controls everything because it keeps you uh, engage in the day-to-day -day activities to really produce at a high level. Um, and I know you're big on mindset. Um, if you want to talk about that for a little bit. Yeah, hundred uh, percent. I agree 100%. So here's my success principle, right? So it's, we call it the 80, 15, five principle, 80%, right? Is mindset. 15% is attitude and effort. And only 5% is skill. What that means to me, Matt, is this, it really means that your mindset, like you just said, is absolutely responsible for how you feel. How somebody feels impacts their actions and behaviors. So in anything that we do, business, relationships, health, fitness, is, is going to be determined on how much action we take. That action is directly correlated to the mindset that we have on a daily basis. And so when you call it 80%, 90%, 95%, whatever the percent is, mindset is the, is the thing that's responsible for the person's actions and behaviors. And so therefore, I agree with you 100%, we have to first strengthen the mindset, strengthen the belief systems that we have to put somebody in a position to win. Because here's what's going to happen. I can teach a real estate agent, Matt, all of the tactics, all of the strategies, all of the best systems, scripts, skills I possibly can. But the second they start dealing with rejection and they, yep. and they uh, 
start going into this negative self-talk, it does, it's all for not, it's all for nothing. So we have to have a strong mindset, strong discipline, strong focus, strong work ethic. All of those things come first, then tactics and strategies come second. Yeah, hundred percent. Well, you know, without that strong mindset, you, you lose the consistency. That's right. You know, and really like everyone wants the uh, magic pill, the easy button. And there really is no easy button in this business. Um, of course, there is things that, that are easy in this business, but they're not easy to do consistently. And they're the consistency what gets you the results. And that's something I learned from you. Um, and, and what I loved about your program, you know, it was it was simple, really, really simple. And it got people to take action. And that's, you know, what I see, you know, on my end now, um, you know, over a brokerage and helping people grow at their businesses I see they get paralyzed into not taking action because there's so many things that they could be doing that they, they have like almost priority confusion and they don't know what to do and they won't take any action long enough for it to actually produce a result um, and over and over. Yeah. So, and I'll add on, I'll add to that and you're hundred percent right. And it's uh, you know, it doesn't matter where you're at or what market is or what company, everybody dealing with the same thing. I, I call it creative avoidance, yep. which I've talked to you about for years and years and years mm -hmm. and years. And you're exactly right. It's, um, I think what's happening is when you and I give recommendations or advice that the person hears how simple it is, they automatically discredit the advice because it just can't be that simple, Matt. It's got to be hard. Are you telling me people making five hundred, eight hundred thousand dollars a year are just making phone calls? Like, come on, it's got to be more than that. I can't accept <laughs> that. Are you telling me people with six pack abs are just eating chicken breast, broccoli, and working out three days a week? Yep, that's it. But people are obsessed with what shoes should I wear when I go on a run? Yep. How, what should my form look like when I do a sit-up or a push-up? Yep. Don't worry about all of that. What I keep trying to harp on people, Matt, is think less, do more. Think yep. less, do more. And you've heard me say this a thousand times. The learning is in the doing. <laughs> it's in the action. It's not in getting ready to one day aim, then take fire. You know what I mean? It's like, no, take action, start doing. And then once you start doing that, you start to build some momentum. You start to build confidence. Your skills start to increase. Everything else starts to take care of itself. But people are avoiding doing the actual things that lead to results and tricking themselves that they're being productive when they're really not. That's that's the you know and, I, and you know I've seen and I've seen this and I've seen this a million times through to people going through different programs and everything else and even with myself. I remember when I first went through your program, it was like you're going to have success in the beginning, and then what you're going to do is you're going to start to try to shortcut shortcut your success and find an easier avenue to go down. And then you're going to call, almost like go back three steps. You're going to take two steps forward, but go back three steps because you tried to shortcut, shortcut the process. Um, and I, I guess that's probably human nature. And I see, now I see it in you know, some of the people that I work with, they'll have success. And then the next thing you know, they're trying to find a shortcut to that success, you know, and they get, they get away from what was producing the success in the first place, you know? Yeah, I would agree. I mean, it's always, it always goes back to the basics, you know, it always goes back to the fundamentals, whether you, and I know you were in the military, uh, it, it just, it's just, it's just executing on the fundamentals. And here's the thing, because it's not sexy, Matt, it's not exciting. It's very boring. It's yeah. mundane work. Yeah. People run away from it and they discredit the basics. When, you know, I always tell the story of, of Vince Lombardi because that's one of the greatest stories in the analogy on base what you and I are talking about. I mean, the, de the defense knew, Matt, exactly what play they were going to run, but they still couldn't stop them because yeah. the execution of the basics were so good. And the same thing goes for real estate agents. If a real estate agent can wake up, master their morning, master their schedule, have 20 new conversations a day, they can't be stopped. They will outproduce everybody. But, you know, that's just too simple. They want to overcomplicate <laughs> it. <laughs> yeah. And how long does it take to make 20 conversations? Two hours. That's it. Yeah. Two hours of work. And at you most. will, <laughs> at most, yeah. and you will outproduce 90% of the real estate agents in your market guaranteed. Why, why do you think, 
you know, it, like it is that simple. It, it really is that simple. And it doesn't matter who you're calling either. Correct. You know, of course, you know, depending on your lead source, it's going to be a little bit better conversion or, or, or versus just a straight code lead. But it really doesn't matter who you're calling. Uh, you're going to stumble upon people that need your help. Why, do, why is it that it is that simple and people cannot do it? I'll tell you. It's because it's because of biology and people's brain is hardwired to have them avoid pain, avoid conflict, take the path of least resistance because our brain is starting is trying to protect us from getting into any pain. And Matt, what happens is human beings are social creatures. We want to feel accepted. And when we start making outbound prospecting phone calls or we start knocking doors or we start doing things that make us feel uncomfortable, immediately, right, our, our subconscious mind says, nope, don't do that. Yep. That's pain. That can't be good. I got to go do something that makes me feel more comfortable. But here's the thing. In real estate specific, if anybody that's going to listen to this podcast, you're going to want to write this one down. Pain is the only evidence we have that you're doing the right oh. things. There's something that Darren Hardy taught me called the pain pendulum. And here's how it works, Matt, and I'll share this with, with your audience. We can't control, we can't just flip on a switch one day and say, okay, I am now successful. I wish you could, you can't. However, you can control how much pain you put yourself in on a daily basis. You can control what time you wake up. You can control if you work out in the morning. You can control if you prospect. So here's what the pain pendulum says. The further you push yourself on the side of pain, the equal side on the opposite of the pendulum will equal in success. So most people, Matt, they live in this world of comfort where they just deal with a little bit of pain. So they only experience a little bit of pleasure. The real successful people, Matt, they push themselves into massive amounts of pain so that when the pendulum swings back, what happens? They get massive amounts of success. And so I always tell people, if you are in pain, that's a good sign you're doing the right thing. If you're comfortable, that's the evidence you're doing the wrong thing. And if you stay comfortable for too long, you're going to find yourself out of this business. Well, yeah, out of this business or you're, you're stuck in kind of what I, I like to call it the messy middle. Yeah, you, yeah, that's true too. Where you just stay frustrated all the time because you have a good month, bad month, good month, bad month, and you kind of bounce around and you never really get through that to actually build leverage in your business, you know, to, to getting, you know, admin support, getting, you know, TC support, getting, you know, a showing agent, getting ISAs because you never make enough money to put these people in place to keep you busy. Well, um, and that is exactly... That proves the point I was just trying to make, you know, like you get uncomfortable. It's like, uh Oh, I got to make some money. So you put your, your foot down on the yep. gas, you close some transactions. Okay. Now I'm comfortable. I'll take my foot off the gas. You let the bank account empty out. And then you get, you just keep going up this vicious cycle up and down, up and down, up and down, up and down. Yeah. This is just constantly turning up the thermostat and turning it down, you know, just playing with the comfort zone. Yeah. Yeah. That's a man. That's a dangerous place to be for burnout. Um, not only in your business, but, you know, your personal life and all everything else, every aspect of your life. That's right. Be there. Um, so let me ask you this. If you had to go back, start over from the beginning, you, you, you became a new agent. Let's just say you moved anywhere in the country. It didn't matter. Let's say we put you in Nashville, Tennessee. Day one, you don't know anyone. You know, how would you grow your business and what would it look like in three years? Yeah, I'll tell you exactly what it would look like. So and exactly what I would do. I, knowing what I know now, because I tell everybody the same thing. I was distracted by so much shiny objects. Every coach, every trainer, Matt, I did it all. I, and I know you know this. Yep. Uh, and I've told you this story. I did it all. Knowing what I know now, I would go to Nashville, Tennessee, and I would make, just like I said before, I would focus on 20 new conversations per day. I would call for sale by owners expired listings, old expired listings, absentee owners for rent by owners and downsizers. And I would have 20 conversations a day, a hundred a week. That hundred a week as a brand new agent, knowing nobody is going to equal one listing appointment. I would go on four listing appointments per month. Yep. I would convert half of them. I would get two listings a month. My first year, that's 24 sales. The next year that all those ratios 
will double, meaning this. I will continue to have 20 conversations. However, instead of it taking 100 conversations to get one listing, now it's only taking 50. Yep. So I'll go to 48 transactions my second year. At the end of my second year, I'm going to hire a full-time assistant. And I'm going to leverage all of the showings to a full-time showing assistant, showing agent. I'm then going to get to, at the end of my third year, I'll probably double again, still making 20 contacts a day. That stays the same. At the end of my third year, I'm going to hire a full-time ISA to make my new 20 contacts per day. And then I'm going to transition my 20 contacts in the database, past clients, centers of influence, focusing on the relationship-based conversations, still, still 20, but now we double down because I've got the ISA doing yep. 20. Now we're doing 40 a day. And by the end of my third year, I'd be over hundred transactions a year. Yep. That's you what I would do. There, you know, you probably get there pre, be, almost a little bit before your third, end of the third year. Just yeah. Just in that simple formula. I just um, laid it out. Simple formula for everybody listening. That's exactly what I would do. Yeah. That I tell people too, if I could go back and start beginning, I would do the exact same thing. I would get, you know, executive assistant that was licensed. Yep. I, I would never get another phone call coming to me again, ever. That's right. In the history. Um, they would take, you know, TC taking it, the base guy would never touch the file after it went to, you know, under contract, you know, stuff for the repair um, agreement. Yep. And then, you know, then the same thing. Um, Let know, me add that. You're, you're right. Because, because I, I kind of, I did skip over that. The assistant is, would absolutely be licensed. Mm -hmm. And from day one, to your point, they'd handle all the transaction from contract to close. And I would train them to uh, handle all of the inspection negotiation yep. and appraisal negotiation. I'd be out of all of that earlier in my career if I could go back and start it all over again. So that 80, 90% of my day, Matt, was all spent in, in income, revenue generating activities, prospecting and going on appointments. And by the end of my third year, I'd be out of the top of funnel lead generation too because yep. my ISA would be doing that. I'd be just doing all lead follow up and going on listing appointments. Yep. You just you just want, we're working with warm leads at That's that it. point. And the reason I called it the messy middle earlier is because people stay in that code lead, and they're You're still right. and you know the whirlwind of the day. If you read the four um, disciplines of execution, yes, yeah, it talks book. about the whirlwind. You know, every day people pulling from you. This is what I came to find out. That, like in real estate, if you never get through the messy middle, you almost get penalized. Cause, cause now you've got more listings, more, you know, you've got more properties on the contract, but now you've got more people wanting stuff from you all it's a day great long. Point. It's a great point. Um, and people just, you got agents calling you. How's the roof? Tell me about this. Tell me about the septic system. Tell me about this. What is this? You've got deals, you know, that are, that are just about to blow up and you think you've got to handle it right now. And you've got all this pulling from you. And you can't really, you, you, you rush to that because it's a lot easier to deal with that than it is right. to actually prospect, which you should be prospecting. So that like, when I, I tell people, I was like, you should get through that messy part as fast as you can. If you just worked hard for 90 days, you could probably get through that and have enough money built up to, you could pay an assistant and get them licensed. And then you should never take any of them calls ever again. And you can scale really, really fast after that. Yeah. And I mean, I agree with you hundred percent, Matt. I mean, um, all that stuff is just pulling you away from what got you there in the first place. And every agent, you're right. They're prioritizing the fires over the new lead gen, uh, lead generation activities, because that stuff doesn't give you an instant gratification. doesn't give you instant results. So they're saying to themselves, well, let me just prioritize fixing this deal because I can fix it right now. I can get a result right now. But here's the thing I always tell people. That two hour call block, two one hour call blocks in the morning, like nothing should take priority of that. Nothing. Yep. All that other stuff is still going to be there at 10 a.m. All of it. It's not going away. The lender, the title company, the agents asking about the roof, it's going to be there at 10, 10, 30, 11 o'clock in the morning. You can deal with it at that time, but don't let the world distract you from your vision, from your goals, from your future. And that eight to 10 block, should be like untouchable time that you just focus on yourself and your future. 100%. Um, I think you, you said it right there, getting clear on your vision. What do you want that to look like? Um, yes. You know, that is, you know, it took me a long time to really get clear on what, what I wanted my business to look like and what did I want it out of life in general. 
Uh, but once I, I actually finally figured it out, now I, the days become easier to make decisions because all I have to do is think, does this get me closer to what I want? Or does it, is this just a shiny object that's distracting me? It's going to take me to left field at any time. That's a great point. Yeah. I mean, one of the first things I do, and you know this, when I coach an agent, I have them write their vision letter out. Yep. There's nothing better than getting clear on where you're going. And you nailed it. It makes decision making so easy. And you, you articulated that perfectly. You just have to ask yourself, is this decision I'm about to make bringing me closer to the vision or pulling me further away? And then it makes all decision making very simple. Yep. hundred percent. And you know, what's, what's, uh, since we're talking about that, it's funny. I can go back probably three, four years ago when I first met you and to see where you were at there and the things you were talking about are now where you're at now. Cause yeah. you were talking about, you know, the listing Academy, you know, reverse selling, you know, opening your own brokerage. That's true. You know, That's a great mortgage. point. Like you were all, it was always on your mind and to wow. see how far you've came and really, and that's a short amount of period of time. And especially your coaching business, to see how much that's grown is it's just been you know amazing to watch you implement and be be you know be a person that's about their word when they say they're going to do something you do it and you continue to level up you know each and every day really that's that's a great point i, I forgot about that yeah like i didn't even have brookstone and now we did 600 million last year yep. you know 220 agents i didn't even have that when i met you you know reverse selling.com didn't even exist listing agent academy didn't even exist mortgage company didn't exist how company didn't exist you know, I was an agent, I think, uh, at the time at like Keller Williams or, or real estate one, when I met you, yep. um, and you're right. Like I shared my vision and like, you know, it's just, it just goes down to execution, putting in the work and executing towards that vision. Time's going to go by no matter what, you that's know, right. that's the one constant. The only question is like, when you wake up in a year or two or three or four, most people, and I think you would agree with this, just aren't happy with where they're at because of a lack of commitment to that vision. Yep. That's it. That's true. And they just lose purpose and they don't. That's right. You know, they're never clear on what they actually want. And then they're never working towards that goal. Um, so what one piece of advice would you give someone, you know, um, you know, within, it doesn't have to be real estate wide, just kind of a piece of advice that someone gave you that's kind of changed your life that you would like to share with someone else. Yeah. So I, I love the, the whole pain pleasure conversation around the pain pendulum. We already talked about that. That's something that's really is shaped my life because, you know, we're emotional creatures, you know? And so like, we have to try to base things off of logic. And the only evidence we have that we're doing the right thing is like, if you're in pain, right? So that's, that's separate outside of that, which you've heard me talk about for years is actions before outcomes, detaching from the outcome and focusing on the activity will serve you so well in your life. And to give people like some concrete examples, Matt, this will make sense when we look at health and fitness. You know, you don't work out one time and expect to see your abs coming through, right? That'd be attached to, to the outcome. Yep. The action is the diet. The action is the running, the lifting of the weights. Fall in love with the process. Fall in love with the journey. Because the thing is, Matt, Everyone's so obsessed with the end result, the thing, the relationship, the car, the money, the this, the that, and they never get there because they're, they're missing the point. And all the studies show that people that accomplish the external motivators, they focused and they obsessed with the journey. The journey was the work. The journey was the love. And so that'd be my one piece of advice is like, if you can really fall in love with your craft of like, like what you're doing and the journey on, on your way, the results will absolutely take care of themselves instead of the other way around. That's absolutely, you know, action. You always say, you know, the, the universe rewards those who take action. That's right. So, I mean, like you said, I think I was talking to um, one of our agents earlier today. And I was like, if you just talk to enough people, even if you can't even, you just mumble stuff out the, through the phone, you're going to stumble upon somebody that needs right. your help that's actually motivated that they don't care. They're just ready to go, you know, if you yeah. take enough action. So I know you got to go, um, you know, um, kind of like I'm a big fan of Jim Collins and his book, you know, Good to Great. He talks about the BHAG, your big, hairy, audacious goal. Um, you know, what is kind of like your, your, your big goal moving forward? 
My, my big goal moving forward is to revamp reverseselling.com to make it the number one online education website for people in the real estate community where they can go to this one place, Matt, and craft their skill, hone their skill on whatever they're working on in that moment. And what I mean by that is this, whether that be a buyer consultation, mm -hmm. a listing consultation, how to grow your database, how to get referrals, all of the things that realtors go through when they're growing their career, real, uh, uh, reverse selling.com, hopefully this summer is going to have all of this content on this one website where, uh, after a click of a button, agents can get the training, the education that they need. Brokers will have somewhere to send their agents to get the education, the training that they need to, to build a very successful career in this industry. So that's what we're working on right now. Nice. I like it. I like it. Uh, and, and like you said, the website. So tell everyone if they're interested in your coaching program, how to get a hold of you, um, yeah. get, get involved in all that. And I really highly recommend a lot of people get involved in it because it will change your career. Um, I promise you that. Yeah. And I appreciate that, Matt. I mean, the, the best place for people to go is either go to our website, reverseselling.com, uh, or they can find me on YouTube. You know, that's where I have just tons of training content. We pump out a video every single day. So they can just find me at uh, just my name, Brandon Mulrennan. If you type that in YouTube, you'll find all my content there. Well, nice, Brandon. Well, I, I've enjoyed it. You've laid out, you know, you've laid out some gold nuggets for people. I mean, you basically told someone from day one what to do to actually get to 100 um, sales per year and be what I, what I like about it. It's highly profitable. You're not that's just right. buying business that's not profitable, um, which is something that I'm really, really consumed at and I care about is being building profitable businesses, not just ego based businesses. Um, oh, you and I are on the same page. And, and Matt, thank you for having me on the show. And, you know, it's been amazing watching you grow your brokerage there. And, and for anybody local in that market, uh, I think it'd be worth your while to go and meet Matt, have a conversation because, uh, Matt, I really believe in you from a leadership perspective, you've walked the walk. That's the key thing because most brokers haven't, most of them haven't succeeded in this business the way that you have. So it's really cool to watch you grow your company. Well, awesome. Brandon, well, I thank you again. And, uh, and I hope some people reach out to you because I know you bring a lot of value to their, to their life. Appreciate it, Matt.